When I was growing up, one of the things we did together as a family was play chess. What we didn't do was use one of these timers. It was just, you know, it took you as long as it takes for you to sort of deliberate your possible options, consider all possible consequences of this or that move or choice. And then when you're ready, that's when you would make your move. It would often take several minutes or longer before only when I was as ready as I knew I would ever be, I would make my move. Now, compare and contrast that way of operating with the moment-to-moment -moment experience of the average person who struggles with what you may know as ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Do you know anyone with ADHD? Do you know anyone with ADHD who also happens to be a hair puller and who tends to pull their hair because they can't sit still? If so, this video is for you. In fact, I may just have an answer for you. Stay tuned. So what is ADHD? Well, it's basically a clinical term that tends to characterize a person who has a very hard time sitting still, and particularly when asked to sit still and do nothing. In fact, to the contrary, they're usually rather hyperactive and impulsive and often find it very difficult to focus their attention on a single task, right? And that's because they can't sit still for very long. Now, I know a thing or two about this from personal experience because when I was a kid in elementary school, and this is back in the late 60s, I just radically dated myself, my parents took me in to see some people and you know they diagnosed me with ADHD. So the diagnosis has been around a long time and I was always cutting up in school. I was a real character and I guess you know they tried to figure out you know what was wrong, you know why I was so, I guess active. Now, why are we talking about this? Well, we're talking about this because it just so happens that quite a few of our clients here at the TRS, particularly the kids, seem to exhibit the typical symptoms of ADHD, whether or not they've been formally diagnosed with it. And to us, that actually makes a lot of sense because generally speaking, hair pulling is something kids and adults do when they're uncomfortable. In fact, situations like that are where people tend to pull their hair most when they're feeling some form of discomfort. So it could be stress, pressure, overwhelm, anxiety, uh, it could be boredom or tedium, or it could be, you know, when a kid is sitting there trying to think his or her way through a homework problem and they're full of energy and nowhere and no way to vent it, you know, so how are they gonna decompress all that energy? Well, if they can't get up because they're supposed to be staying on task, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna deal with that discomfort by tugging on or pulling on or maybe pulling out their hair. Now, these are people who don't know how to manage emotional or sensational discomfort. Through no fault of their own, they've just never been trained to do that. So in situations like this, hair pulling does indeed at least attempt to serve what I think we can all agree is an adaptive purpose, which is to help them feel better either by venting out some of that pent-up energy or perhaps by effectively redirecting their attention from whatever they're feeling on the inside, you know, the unbearable sensation of you know, that fidgetiness that just doesn't have anywhere to go, to the quite distinct, quite discernible, quite localized feeling of pulling on or sometimes pulling out their hair. See, like anything else we ever do, there is a positive purpose for hair pulling. And that's almost always gonna be as a means of at least trying to quell emotional or sensational discomfort. Now, of course, none of this intellectual stuff is going through the hair puller's mind at a time like this. All they know is they're uncomfortable, and at times like that, they tend to go on autopilot. You know, they fall into a behavioral pattern that they practiced hundreds, maybe thousands of times, and that is, you know, feel uncomfortable, go for the hair. You know, in fact, there's likely to be no conscious decision making whatsoever about it. It's simply stimulus response. But see, the problem is, ultimately, these people are trying to relieve their emotional or sensational discomfort by doing something they know they don't actually want to be doing. But if they've never been trained to do anything else, can we really blame them for fishing around for something, anything, to help them feel better when they really need it? After all, that's just human nature. It's not just them, it's you and me too. We all come wired from the factory to want to avoid pain at all costs. 
Now that includes the kind of discomfort, you know, kids who are forced to sit still for any length of time might just be feeling at times like that. Again, what this person really needs is training in how to tolerate emotional or sensational discomfort without having to do something like hair pulling in order to alleviate it. And it's even better if they can learn to do this while at the same time making well thought out decisions for how best to proceed at times like that. Well, guess what? That just happens to be what you get good at when playing chess. That's right. Now again, I'm not talking about the kind of chess where they're you know, playing on a timer and you know, I'm not talking about yeah, yeah, five minutes total uh, to get through the game. No, I'm talking about playing the game with no timer at all. Giving the person all the time they need to sit still as they take time to carefully gather the lay of the land, to carefully consider you know, what the other person might be thinking, and with all that information, what their many options might be and what after all might be the optimal choice given all those possibilities. Now, do you think your child could benefit from that kind of training? Because I'll tell you what, learning to fully consider your present situation and given all that, to carefully calculate your next move will translate to everywhere else in a person's life. No more jackrabbit reacting, you know, to every little thing that happens, especially adverse things because it's often those kinds of impulsive reactions that gets the person into trouble and that they regret later, but now that it's happened, you can't take it back anymore. So from personal experience, having played the game this way and having suggested this to several of our clients and their kids started playing chess and it actually benefited them greatly, I'm recommending it to you now. Now to be clear, just sitting down with your child and introducing them to chess and how to play it you know, isn't really going to be enough. That's not really enough time to learn anything, and especially at the unconscious level. And it may just be that you as a parent need to take the initiative here, encouraging your child to play with you so they have a regular partner to play with and to practice with long enough until the skills we've been talking about here become ingrained at the unconscious level. And by the way, you'll know it when it starts to happen, you'll be able to see the difference. You're basically training your child how to sit down, sit still, and calmly, rationally consider their present situation and to think out and maybe mentally play out in their mind first their many choices until they finally settle on one and then commit to that move. Now what child, or for that matter, how many adults, you know, could, could benefit from that kind of training? What do you think? Are you willing to give it a shot? If so, jump in, let us know how it goes, okay? I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to be able to notify you when we have new content and more helpful videos coming your way. And you know what? Go ahead and hit that reply button below. Leave us a comment, talk to us. How did this video impact you? If you're watching this video at our Facebook community page, please leave a comment there. We'd love to meet and chat with you. In fact, if you have questions about trichotillomania or hair pulling in general, and you're just not quite sure where to go for answers, please feel free to visit our website at www.trick-free.com. You'll see a contact us form at the upper right of all of our web pages. We do actually look through all the questions that come into us very carefully, just like we do all the comments and questions that show up here at our YouTube channel. And we do our best to answer as many of those questions in these very videos as possible. Again, please do be sure to like and subscribe. We're here to entertain, inform, and most importantly, to empower you to begin taking control of your hair pulling in ways you probably never imagined possible. If you'd like to reach out to us directly to get some information about how we can help you or a loved one, feel free to visit our website at www.trick-free.com or to call us at any time of day or night toll free at 833-TRICK-FREE. Thanks again for watching. I'm Robert Mantell with the Trichotillomania Relief Specialist. Here's wishing you an amazing trick-free week.